Good morning, New Calvary Baptist Church. Today is October the 11th, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad unto him. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord and let us exalt his name together. Let us pray our prayer of invocation, all wise and eternal creator, Abba, Father, Daddy, Mother God. We come before you this morning, oh God, just to say thank you. Thank you for what our eyes have seen and ears have heard. Thank you for allowing us to press into your presence. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this worship experience, oh God, that we will have an intimate encounter with you and we will not leave this place like we came, but we're going to leave excited to run on to see what the end is going to be. It is in the marvelous, the magnificent, the miracle working name of Jesus Christ, our healer, our redeemer, our helper, and our friend that we pray. All of God's children said amen, amen, and amen. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth on today.
Truly, we magnify the Lord on this day. Truly, we celebrate and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. For the Lord is worthy to be praised. The Lord in all of God's majesty is worthy. And we come together today to just say hallelujah and thank you, God, for another opportunity to share and worship together. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come to rejoice and be glad in it. And so we celebrate today as God has given us the great grace and the opportunity uh, to come together to fellowship with one another. We are grateful, beloved, that you are sharing with us in this worship space. We hope and pray that something is done in this moment that simply encourages your heart and enriches you to keep running this race, that we know that there's so many things going on in this season, but we still believe there is a reason to praise the Lord. So while we have a chance, we will worship together. We will praise God together. We will pray together, believing that God is not finished with us yet. Uh, we, in this moment, so glad that you are worshiping with us virtually as we share together uh, in the name of Jesus. We uh, take this time just to acknowledge a few announcements for this morning. And so please make sure that you are indeed uh, ordering uh, yourselves and conducting yourselves accordingly in regards to these announcements. Please be made aware that we are still looking for you to sign up virtually for our virtual Sunday school classes that as we continue to share, amen, we are grateful about that. We are grateful and excited that we continue to be a church that is mobile, that New Calvary is mobile in this season. And so please, there are those who are uh, still interested and excited about sharing in their Sunday school learning and in their Sunday school classes. We've been told that our Sunday school classes have been missing each other, and so we want to give opportunity to do that. So make sure you are calling the church office to sign up to make sure that you can be a part of one of those classes. Uh, the virtual school will begin in the first week in November, so please make sure that you are signing up for that as well. Also, please know that every Sunday from 11.30 to 12.30, we are sharing in our teen ministry as they go virtual. We're grateful for our teens and our young people who are sharing and continuing to do ministry in this mobile season. Uh, and so uh, we will, they, they will get together every Sunday from 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Zoom. And so uh, the information will be posted on your screen, but that ID number is 884 7091. There is no password required, young people, so make sure that you get on and make sure that uh, you share and participate in the fellowship as we come together. Continuing to move in our virtual Bible study as we talk about this journey of Job and what is happening in Job's situation and in Job's life. And this week, and we continue as we look at Elihu and see what young Elihu has to say to these friends who have shared with him and ex explained in, from their perspective Job's situation. But we're going to hear from Elihu and we're going to wrestle with what Elihu has to say to Job in this season. So we pray that you all with us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we get into the scriptures and that we uncover and unpackage uh, what it means to journey in this world and suffering, particularly in this in-between season. We want you to also be reminded, beloved, that Family and Friends Day, uh, we are gathering in our park and praise once again. We will be celebrating in part once again in our park and praise October 25th at 10 a.m. October 25th at 10 a.m. We'll probably open up around 9 uh, o'clock or 8.30 uh, for those to come in and set up. So please make sure that uh, we want to make sure that everybody's adjusted in their parking. So please come on out uh, and share as we celebrate Family and Friends Day together. I promise we're going to have some stuff for you. We're going to be, uh, it's going to be exciting. We're going to put that together as well. Please make sure that you continue to be a blessing to the New Calvary family with your tithes and your offerings. We make no apologies and make no mistake to tell you that we cannot make this happen without the New Calvary Baptist Church family. So continue as we go forward to make sure that things go virtually, as we continue to make sure that our operation uh, budget continues to be met. We need your financial support and your financial giving. So please be faithful to the New Calvary Baptist Church family. You can bring 
uh, your offerings and tithes to the church. You can mail them to 800 East Virginia Beach Boulevard uh, here in the city of Norfolk, 23504. Or uh, you can get on GiveLify and make New Calvary your favorite place to give uh, as you continue to sign up uh, and sign on and share with us in those ways. However you give, we understand that it is our obligation as believers to continue to be faithful to God for all that God has done we are indeed continuing to go forward in our prayers in this moment that as we invoke the Lord's presence in this place, there may be someone that you are looking uh, to pray for and to pray with. We continue to pray uh, for the Arnold family. We continue to pray in this season and in this moment uh, that for those members of the New Calvary family who continue to need encouragement and direction. So if that is you, just please put your prayer request in the comment section and we will make sure uh, that our virtual minister continues to respond and react and offer up prayer and encouragement to you in this time. And so as we go in this moment, we would ask that you would bow and share with us in a word of prayer. Gracious and eternal God, how thankful we are for all that you have done and how you continue to bless us and keep us. Grateful, dear God, for you leading us in this moment. And God, we ask that you would just continue in all things to strengthen us in uh, this worship experience. Now, God, so many things are going on in this life's journey. So many things are happening. But as we continue to share with you, we look uh, for your encouragement. We look for your strength. We look for your power to continue to keep us, lead us, and guide us. So have your way, God. Continue uh, to bless us in a mighty way. Touch every member of the New Calvary Baptist Church family. Touch the friends of New Calvary, those who are worshiping in this moment. Touch the body of believers who come to understand that you are indeed the center and strength of all of their joy and their ability. God, we pray, God, for a nation that continues to be divided. We pray for a nation that continues to seek answers. But most of all, we pray for a nation for those who earnestly seek your face and your direction. So let us continue to speak up and to speak out against places of injustice, but to declare what thus saith the Lord. Let us understand, God, what it means to have life matter and what it means to have life be significant. Let us understand, God, that the decisions of our leaders affect those who live in this country and throughout. So God, touch them right now and let us make wise decisions. Let us be smart. Let us be wise in our direction and in our faithfulness, Lord, in all things. And we promise, God, we will give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, we pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. We pray, God, for those who are in their houses, in their homes. Pray for their financial situations. We pray, God, that you might strengthen and enrich them as only you can. Continue, Lord, that in this season of in-between, in this moment when they are not sure, we ask, dear Lord, that you would just continue to support and sustain them, that they will be reminded of your great goodness and your marvelous works. God, bless us all because we need it. Bless us all because some of us are weary and burdened. Bless us all, God, because some of us are exhausted in this season, but we're still trusting in you, God. We're still believing in you, God. We're still lifting you up. We're still going forward. Believe that you're not finished with us yet. So have your way. Have your way as only you can, and we promise in all things we'll give you praise, honor, and glory. For it is in the wonderful and marvelous name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen, say amen, and say amen. So listen, real quick, as our choir prepares to come in this moment, I just want to say thank you to all of those who have wished well birthday wishes on this day and in the days ahead before. Amen. I am grateful for God blessing me with 49 years of life in this season. But as we celebrate year 49, this is just the precursor to the turn up, amen? That we just getting ready for 50, but right now we gonna celebrate 49 and live this life to our best. So today, we are honored and blessed to share with my friend and my brother, the Reverend Dr. Eugene L. Gibson, Jr. He has been a brother beloved and a friend of New Calvary for quite a while. He has celebrated in my birthday moments and we have decided to share that this moment would be no different. That we always go to each other for each other's birthday birthday celebrations and so this year I wanted to keep the consistency going and so as we hear from our choir I want you to understand uh, just how loved just how cherished and just how valuable this brother's friendship is to me that as we share as two parts of the wolf pack we continue to grow in God together and grow in fellowship uh, and grow in age amen amen he has now been declared 
as the pastor elect of the Mount Olivet Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio. Amen. He is the new pastor elect of Mount Olivet Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio, where the great preacher and evangelist, the Reverend Dr. Charles Edward Booth, was the senior pastor. And he has uh, beloved and cherished the Mount Olivet place of the outpouring in Memphis, Tennessee for several years. And so he is continuing to be promoted and go further in his ministry. And I could not be happier or prouder of him. So after this choir blesses us, the next voice we will hear will be that of my friend, my brother, the Reverend Dr. Eugene L. Gibson Jr., Pastor Elect, Mount Olivet Baptist Church of Columbus, Ohio. Let us receive him by giving him glory. Put your lights up and let him know you enjoy it. thank you for this incredible opportunity to share. We thank you for this pastor. We thank you for this people 
Thank you for this celebration. Thank you for this time of revival. We bless you now, God. We thank you for all our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. Thank you, God, for the amazing power of technology. that We might be able to be in two places at the same time, declaring and experiencing your holy word from your holy writ. Bless us now, God, for now is preaching time. You told me a long time ago, if I'd open up my mouth, you'd speak for me. Go to open up my mouth, Lord, and I'm expecting a miracle. Till the soil of the mind, the heart, and the spirit, so that the seed planted today can fall on good soil. With proper care, it can grow into a fruit-bearing tree. In the words of the psalmist, I need you now. Bless this message, this moment, and even this man, not because the preacher deserves it, but because the people desire it. Lord, pull so much oil on my head that the ground beneath my feet would be wet. Give us information for our head, illumination for our heart, and inspiration for our hand. Lord, if you be so kind, send the preacher now. And we won't wait till the battle is over, till the sermon is done, but we'll give you praise in advance, for your credit is all right with us. Hallelujah. Sanctuary, Lord, for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's up, New Calvary? Me, Pastor Gino, back in the house. I usually am there, of course, during this time for my boy's birthday celebration as he comes to me in June. But I'm not there because of COVID. But look at technology. Look at what God is doing. I am missing hanging out with, with everybody I hang out there with. But I need not tell you that your pastor is one of my favorite people on God's green earth. I, I say without the Lord, without my wife, and without William Marcus Small, I might not be here today. But I I bless you, Doc. Thank you so much for the invite. You know how we do it. You know how we do it. Pack for life. Reggie Williams in Chicago. And, of course, my boy uh, Small. Listen, man, I'm so upset I can't be there with you. But thank you for the invite. Technology is amazing. And there is a word from the Lord. I know you're telling your people, but I'm trying to do it in, in what is called visible rhetoric. Everybody has to go vote. Make sure you go vote so that we might be able to be a difference in this city, this state, this nation and even this world but small listen man love you doc more than you even know more than I can even tell you but we are going to get together as soon as this COVID lifts once again New Calvary put your hands together for your past I ain't gonna tell you how old he is same age as me though check it out happy birthday William Marcus Small there's a word from the Lord let's go to the text book of Matthew the book of Matthew the 27th chapter 24th through the 25th verse in the New Revised Standard, the book of Matthew, Gospel according to Matthew, it says these words. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. The people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and our children. And I want to preach with the aid and assistance of the Holy Spirit as well as your prayers. Some stuff just don't come off. Some stuff just don't come off. And I would that you would flank me with your prayers on some stuff just don't come off. Brother Calvin, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Some stuff just don't come off. Beloved of God, we've heard it before, and we probably date ourselves when we, when we say it. Sugar and spice and everything nice, that's what little girls are made of. This nursery rhyme, number 821 in the famous Rude Folk Song Index, said to have been written by Englishman Robert Southerly, says that girls are made of sugar and spice and everything nice, girls who are soft, girls who are pretty, girls who are beautiful, and girls who are clean, according to Southerly, are made up of sugar and spice and everything nice. Well, he keeps writing and says, that if that's what little girls are made of, little boys are made of frogs and snails and puppy dog tails. This is what Southerly said little boys are made of. Well, me, 
not, not, not so much. My mother made sure that from the youngest possible age that I had impeccable hygiene practices. I mean, to the point that she probably created a monster. My wife will tell you that I'll take three showers a day for just no reason. I mean, in fact, I'll take a shower to go work out to come home to take a shower again. That's why I never understood frogs and snails and puppy dogs tails because I thought that I had it down. I thought that I had my hygiene pretty tight until I met my wife, sugar and spice and everything nice. I mean, she came into my life and made me feel like I was frogs and, and snails and puppy dog tails. And she did it in the most simple way. She said out of the clear blue one day, you are going to wash your hands, aren't you? And it's amazing that since I met this woman, I probably washed my hands more times than I've ever washed my hands in my entire life. In fact, I walk around in a perpetual state of ashiness because my wife wants me to wash my hands. And what's most embarrassing about these moments is that sometimes she treats me like the children and says out loud in front of everybody, did you wash your hands? And I say yes. And then she says like I'm seven with soap because somewhere. She has either learned or came to believe that if you wash your hands, simply wash your hands, that everything that you have touched or everything that has come into contact with you will somehow come off. It is amazing that during this pandemic of COVID-19, one of the greatest outbreaks in, modern, in the modern era, over 1 million deaths worldwide and 210,000 in America, one of the most consistent deterrents or protocols for to keep people safe is that they talk about worldwide, you need to wash your hands with soap for at least two minutes because they, like my wife, believe that simply if you wash your hands, everything that you have touched or everything that has touched you and arguably everything that, 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 that you come into contact with will come off if you simply wash your hands. You do know that our hands represent our actions. Shakespeare said that the hand, even though the eyes are the windows to the soul, that hands are the actions of what the soul of what the, is in the soul. I mean, if you if you hear me, you hear me say it every week when I preach. I talk about I talk about God give us information for our head. That's the stuff that I think and I know. The illumination for our heart. That's the stuff I believe and I feel. But ultimately, God give me inspiration for my hand. My hand. My hand is what I do with my actions. The hand is the sum total of my work. It is, it is more than what I know and I believe. It's more than what I think and what I feel. But my hands are the kinetic part of my spirit. It's how I lay my lot. My hand is how, is how I work. My hand is what I do. Calvin, whether subconsciously or consciously, my hand is the ultimate expression of my soul. Your hands can bring you glory and therefore you raise your hands in victory or pump your fist in triumph or they can bring you shame. And that's when you try to hide your hand or you wash them to remove the sting, the stench, and the stain. And the Bible says that Pilate, that Pilate ordered some water in the middle of a court proceeding to wash off whatever he had done or whatever he was about to do with his hand. You remember Pilate, don't you, the Roman governor assigned to the outposts of the American, I mean the Roman Empire called Judea, filled with those undesired black, mean, black I mean um, Jewish people. This was not the place that Pontius Pilate wanted for his career. In fact, some say that he had been stationed there as some type of demotion, that he was being taught a lesson and he was given to this undesirable place with such an undesirable people. He was far removed from the crowning glory of Rome. Yeah, he, he was placed in a place where the knee of America, I mean literally uh, the knee of, 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 Jew, of Rome was on the neck of the marginalized black, I mean Jewish population. You've seen this place before, haven't you? A place where there's limited access to education and unemployment in, in the black and brown, I mean, Jewish parts of town, little or no adequate health care for babies before or after birth. Black boys, I mean, Jewish boys who, who step out of line are, are, and don't toe the imperial line are seen as a threat so many times that they are cast into the margins. And unfortunately, if they, be, they become bloods or crips, I mean, zealots or banditti, these, these are the boys that I'm not 
that are not towing the imperial line. And of course, if they get caught doing something that they should not be doing, the police, I mean the Roman guards who maintain constant uh, pro uh, presence among them, do not really have to give them a fair trial, but they could meet out their form of justice that included flogging with a cat or nine tails at least and ultimately crucifixion making it clear that in America I mean Roman controlled Judea black lives I mean Jewish lives absolutely don't matter and it is to this undesirable outpost with these undesirable people that Pilate was assigned to be the governor and though he didn't like it he had been there long enough that things were going pretty good. He had been there long enough to know how to maintain control until he heard, Kenny, that there was a young Jewish preacher from, from Nazareth of Galilee named Jesus who was upsetting the status quo. And it was more than just a little ruckus. It was more than, than just a little ruckus. I mean, the Jewish leaders had arrested and tried Jesus and convicted him in what the old preacher would call a kangaroo court. And when uh, they were petitioning Pilate for permission to kill him because crucifixion could be only granted by the governor. They did not like this Jesus because he was upsetting things. They did not like this Jesus because the status quo was messed up. These Jewish leaders did not like this. They didn't like this Jesus. They didn't like him because he was messing up, but they arrested him. They tried him and they convicted him, but they could not kill him without the governor's permission. And it was on this day that Jesus was to be in court. I wasn't there, but I was just thinking that, that Pilate probably was not, a, it was not a good morning for Pilate. He probably didn't wake up on the right side of the bed. He checked his calendar and said, ah, he remembered that the black, I mean Jewish leadership, that though they came to the White House for press photo ops and all of that stuff, that he in his own soul despised them because at the end of the day, they were still black, I mean Jewish. But he goes to court to do his job. I'm almost done, y'all. He goes to court to do his job, and they bring Jesus before him, and he confirms that Jesus is from Galilee. And when he confirms that Jesus is from Galilee, according to Luke, uh, this pleased him, and he sends Jesus to Herod. You remember Herod, don't you? He was the king of the area of Galilee. History reports that in several cases that Herod, Herod was addicted to opiates, or he was a drug type of person. And when he gets there, I don't know if that's true, but when he gets there, it seems true because the Bible says that Herod, possibly under the influence, mocks and laughs at Jesus and sends him back to Pilate. Pilate's doubly upset. He's in a place that he doesn't like to be. He sent Jesus over to Pilate, I mean over to Herod. Herod sends him back. So Pilate says, if I have him flogged, he should be all right. So they have him flogged. He has him flogged. And Jesus, as the old pastor would say, they whipped him all night long. They took, they took turns and they, they beat him. 39, 39 lashes of peace, 40 minus 1. And all of this is going on. However, after all of this, Pilate thinking he satisfied the ravenous taste in the mouths of the Jewish leadership. After all of this, they ask still for Jesus to be crucified. Pilate, with the pillow talk of his wife fresh in his ear, his wife told him, of course, that she, she had a dream about Jesus, and Jesus was an innocent man. He should not do anything to Jesus. It's with a heavy heart, possibly sweaty palms, that he ordered for water to be brought to him so that he could wash his hands. In fact, the accuracy, let's see what Matthew says here. Matthew says that when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather the riot was beginning. He took some water, washed his hands before the crowd and say, I'm innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Pilate wanted to wash his hands of the innocent blood of this man. I believe that though Pilate scrubbed his hands in clear sight of the people, Pilate knew something deep down in the depths of his soul that unlike my wife and unlike some of the people at the CDC believe, Pilate knew that I don't care how much you wash your hands, some stuff just don't come off. Pilate knew that government corruption does not just come off. Mistreatment of the poor and the marginalized don't just come off. Ignoring the needs of the lost, the last, and the least don't just come off. And I'm talking about 
Judea, but yes, even in these yet to be United States, there's a whole hell of a lot of stuff that just don't come off. 45, 450 years of chattel slavery and dehumanization of the enslaved people, which included the gathering of our people in the motherland, the herding us as human cattle and human cargo on ships designed for destiny and death, ensuring, ensuring our bodies as prophets, so even if we die or acted up and they threw us over the side, they would still make their money. That stuff just don't come off. The menacing middle passage of the mid-Atlantic, the raping of our women, of our men, of our boys and girls in slavery, the killing of black men and black boys, that stuff just don't come off. The legalized segregation of Jim Crowism that was separate but never equal. No, that stuff is still there because that stuff just don't come off. The killing of Emmett Till on the lie of a white woman that stuff does not come off and even now the continued death of unarmed black and brown men and women people with court and, and the courts not giving due process that stuff does not come off including the racist misogynistic republic narcissism of the occupant of the white house even right now who has proven that he cares nothing about this country, his party, his family, or even his wife, preserving himself at all costs. That stuff does not just come off. <laughs> but even in our own lives, the things that we have done, the stuff that people have done to us, Though we might think we've washed our hands, and we have, and even though it seems like our hands are clean, we know some of that stuff just don't come off. That bankruptcy just don't come off. Our credit is better, but that the, the hurts of that does not just come off. The divorce that we went through, we're married and happy now, but that stuff just don't come off. That molestation and rape does not just come off. It's, just, it's been years ago, but it doesn't just come off. In fact, I had a lady come to my office. She was 50-something years old, and she came to my office bawling, crying, and asked her what, what happened. She said, a friend of the family had just died, and when she was 16 years old, that friend of the family raped her, and she and he were the only people that knew. She was happily married and had kids, but that stuff did not just come off. The Bible says that Pilate ordered some water to wash his hands. The people told him, he told the people that the guilt would be on them. And in the next verse, they say to him, the people answered, his blood be on us and even our children. Oh, if I had time, if I had time, I would talk about the generational stains that seemingly, seem, seemingly plague many of us. And I, because our parents' hands look clean, our grandparents' hands look clean, but there was some stuff that did not come off and generations have to pay for the stings generations have to pay for the stains generations have to pay and deal with the stench that just does not come off I do, I see you wondering, Calvin, we about to roll. I, I see you wondering where I'm going. I see you wondering because I've painted this thing kind of dim. I see you asking where is the resolution and celebration, Pastor Gino. I see you, you asking where is the synthesis and the answer to the relevant question, preacher. I mean, where is the hope in the midst of this stuff that just won't come off? It's simply right here. When you, when you look at the lives, when you look at our lives and we have some stuff that won't come off, and when you look at Pilate's hands in the text and realize his stuff won't come off and even when you look at the leaders of this country and the leaders in the text people that yelled crucify him people who act like crucify him every day and realize that stuff won't come off the shout of this matter is tonight that there's one more set of hands in that text and I'm talking about those bound hands of the man that was on trial the preacher from Nazareth who was charged with being an insult Resurrectionist, they took him from that proceeding and made him carry a cross on his back and with his hands. They took him to Calvary and stretched his arms wide, but when they stretched his arms wide, they put some nails in his hands. And after they did some other things to him, he died for you and died for me. 
believe. But the record is that on the third day, he got up. And when he got up, my daddy used to say he took the power of sin and took the power of death and took power of the graves and rolled it up in his hands. And he said, all power whoop, in heaven and earth is in my hand. But that's not it. If you keep pushing, Thomas doubted him after the resurrection. And he said, unless I see the marks in his hands, then I know that he is alive. And the record is the marks were still there. And all I'm trying to say is that some stuff does not come off. But Jesus still has the receipt in his hands. It did not come off no matter how you try to wash it. What shall wash? <laughs> Away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What shall make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of the Lamb. He still has power in his hands. And since I know that his hands are sure than my hands, I'm going to put my stuff in his hand. I put my fear in his hands, my doubts in his hands, my anxiety in his hands, the disease in his hands, my worries in his hands, my problems in his hands, my relationship in his hands, my children in his hands, my career in his hands, my finances in his hands, my church in his hands, my health in his hands, whatever the problem I know that he can solve them, this and that. I put it all, all in his hands. Is there anybody watching tonight that can put your hands together and say all in his hands, all in his hands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put it all in his hand. Even in this time of voting and this time of election, we put these things in God's hands, but they're things that we can do. So let us all get together, realizing some stuff don't come off, but we are able to make a difference with the work of our hands because he has all power in his hands. We are able to use the power in our hands. We need to vote and allow this country to know what they've done does not simply come off. But we use our power, the power of Jesus Christ, to make things right. Let me pray for you, God. We thank you for your hands. Thank you that that blood never comes off. Thank you that it covers the mess in our hands. Thank you that we get another chance simply because your grace is sufficient unto us. Now bless us, God, as we have tasks assigned to our hands. Those of us that are voting, those of us that are able to vote, give us the strength as we go forth realizing that because of you, every stain, every sting, and every stench on our hands is no longer held against us. You're covered by your blood. For that, we give you glory. Bless this pastor. Bless this people. Bless this celebration. We thank you now in Jesus' name. This is the word of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, wow. We hope that that sermon blessed your life. We hope that that sermon from my brother, the Reverend Dr. Eugene L. Gibson, was indeed a blessing to you in this moment. We pray that as this man of God continues to shower and continues to share in this moment, that we might be enriched and empowered. We hope that that message lasts you for this week and gives you food to feast on as we continue to endure. So we are grateful for my dear brother, uh, Dr. Gibson, for sharing with us in this season. Thank you, man. Appreciate your gift, appreciate your friendship, and appreciate the blessing you have been to the New Calvary Baptist Church. At this particular moment, we want to extend this invitation to discipleship. Maybe somebody here who is not 
in relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, maybe somebody who is looking to simply share and become a part of the fellowship of faith as you walk together. It doesn't matter where you live. doesn't matter where you are. We just want you to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is indeed your Savior, and we want you to have a relationship as you walk in this life, understanding that God has more possibility in store for you. So if that's you in this moment, I just want you to raise your hand and say, God, I love you. God, I'm calling upon you because I want through. I went through this life and I've gone through this life so far believing that I could do it by myself. But I understood, God, that I can't make it without you. I've understood, God, that I have some talents, I have some abilities, and I have some gifts. But God, through it all, I need you in the places where I fall short. I need you in the gaps. I need you in the hard and rough places. And so, God, if you will, just accept me. I take you into my heart right now. I take you into my heart, God, and as your son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior, that his example, his life, his teaching would lead, guide, and direct me to be the best me that I can be. That as I walk with you, I understand that you have covered me and forgiven me for whatever it is and my places have fallen short. But I continue to understand that I strive to do more and be better in this moment. So right now, God, I just ask you to have your way in my life. Continue to lead me and direct me. And in all things, I'll give you praise. All things, I'll serve you. All things, I'll, I'll lead and be direct, be f follow where you lead me. And it is in the wonderful, marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus uh, that I say amen. And I say amen. We here celebrate with you and we applaud whatever God is doing with you in this moment. For we recognize that God is continuing to keep and restore you in this moment. What a time, beloved, we have had today in worship. What a time we have had in service. We believe that God has blessed and ordained this moment. And again, I just want to thank everybody for celebrating and sharing with me in what I believe is a very, very special time. Grateful for all of you. Grateful for my family that continues to support and bless. Grateful for the new Calvary family. And as we continue to go forward, I believe that God is not finished with us yet. So as we continue to depart from this place, we want to leave in a word of prayer. Please be mindful that on this Monday, we will share in our prayer call at 8 a.m. So please make sure that you're on the call sharing and being blessed. And as you get encouraged to see what the rest of the week has for you. We will get together on Wednesday to share in our virtual Bible study at 7 p.m. And we look forward to sharing with you in our worship again at 11 a.m. next Sunday. So here it is. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord place his countenance upon you that you might have peace both now and forevermore. And the people of God who love God together, they would say amen, amen, and amen. God love you. God bless you. we see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and take care of each other. We'll talk to you later. Peace.